Hey, I'm Mike. Welcome to the Code Dojo. Today, we're going to study one of the most essential code katas. If you've done much interviewing for software engineering jobs, then it's pretty likely that at some point you've been asked to perform this kata. I'm talking, of course, about the FizzBuzz kata. FizzBuzz is often used as a kind of litmus test. The idea is to try to separate those who actually write a lot of code from those who just know a lot of computer science. You see, the concepts involved in FizzBuzz aren't all that complicated. You're not trying to reconstruct some convoluted data structure or memorize an algorithm that has all kinds of fancy optimizations. Most software engineers don't do that kind of thing in their everyday job. FizzBuzz gives you the opportunity to show just how quickly and effortlessly you can solve a simple programming problem. It also gives you the chance to show just how thoughtful you are about certain elements of your design. So what are the rules of FizzBuzz? I've seen FizzBuzz take on a couple different forms, but usually it goes something like this. Given an integer that's greater than or equal to zero, if the integer is divisible by three, return the word fizz. If it's divisible by five, return the word buzz. If it's divisible by both three and five, return the word fizzbuzz. And if none of the above are true, then just return the integer. Okay, enough talk. Let the training begin. So we begin, as we do in all things, with a test. And in this case, I think what I'm going to test is the integer 0. Um, the reason is because these are all positive integers that our function needs to support. And so that makes 0 a boundary condition. It's the smallest integer that could be given to our function. Um, I'm going to call the class fizzbuzz, as indicated by the name of my test. And I'm going to call the method of. Um, I think that'll read nicely. Fizzbuzz of one, fizzbuzz of two. I like that. So um, fizzbuzz of zero should be zero. Zero is not divisible by three or five. Uh, so yeah. So let's write this out. Fizzbuzz of zero is zero, and it's the string zero because remember this function needs to return the word fizz, the word buzz, and the word fizzbuzz. So um, the return type needs to be a string. So we are returning the string zero. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so the fizzbuzz class doesn't exist yet. Uh, let's go ahead and create that. Uh, no, not in the test folder. That's gonna have to be in the main folder. Okay, great, nice. Okay, and the of method doesn't exist, so let's go ahead and create that. Remember, it's gotta return a string. We just talked about that. I think i is a good enough parameter name. Um, we'll just leave that alone. Okay, so that test fails. The simplest way to fix it is to just hard code the return to zero. Now it passes. All right, next test. So um, let's just work our way up. Uh, up next, the f one. So fizzbuzz of one is one. Uh, type that out, fizzbuzz of one is again the string one and that fails. So the simplest way to fix this is to say string value of i pass. All right, next test. All right, um, I think we can skip two because that's not gonna be any different than one. Let's go to three, three is interesting. So fizzbuzz of three is fizz, right? So fizzbuzz of three is the string fizz. All right, that fails, obviously. So what we can do is just say, you know, the simplest way to fix this, if i is three, then return fizz. There we go. All right, next test. All right, um, four again is not interesting, but five is. So fizzbuzz of five is buzz. Fizzbuzz of five is buzz. That fails. And we can pull the same trick. If i is five, then return buzz. Pass. All right. Next test. So uh, up next, 
we can go to 6 because 6 is interesting. It should also be fizz. Fizz buzz of 6 is fizz. All right, that fails. Simplest way to fix this is to say, well, if I um, <coughs> mod 3 is 0, that means that i is divisible by 3, so we should return fizz. Okay, well, our new test just passed, but one of our old tests failed. Our original test for 0 failed. And this is because the modulus operator uh, is a lot like division in that, you know, 0 mod anything is 0. So this works even though 0 is not divisible by 3. So this is just a difference between the modulus operator and what we mean when we say divisible. So um, good thing we had a test. Our test caught that little bug there. So um, we're just going to have to add a special condition here. And if i equals 0, we're just going to have to hard code that we return 0. This is just outside of the you know, kind of regular flow of the program. All right, there we go. So that passes. And we can go on and write another test. So let's jump to the test for 10, because that's interesting. Um, and this is going to have the same problem, isn't it? We can pull the same trick here. And sure enough, it works. That passes. So let's go ahead and move on to the next test. Um, the next interesting integer is probably going to be 15, because that's divisible by both 3 and 5. So uh, fizzbuzz of 15 is fizzbuzz. Fizzbuzz of 15 is fizzbuzz. That fails. Um, so the simplest way to fix this is going to be to say, OK, if I mod 3 equals 0 and I mod 5 equals 0, then return fizzbuzz, right? Kind of following the same style that we've had. That passes. But we've introduced some duplication here. So we're not done. Um, we need to remove this duplication. So how are we going to do that? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is get rid of some of these extra return statements and just return uh, one string. So let's just have the string s um, start out as an empty string. And s becomes fizzbuzz, s becomes fizz, s becomes buzz. And then we'll say, um, if s is empty, then return this, otherwise return s. OK. Now, that doesn't work, and the reason is because of this. Um, if uh, our, our um, i is divisible by both 3 and 5, then s is going to get set to fizzbuzz, but then it's immediately going to get overwritten as fizz and then overwritten again as buzz. So we got to move that down here so it's the last thing that happens and I think that should pass it does okay cool um, we still have the duplication though so uh, I think we can remove the duplication by appending these strings instead of remove or instead of overwriting them um, that still works and now I think we can take this out and that still works okay um, a little bit more clean up here uh, personally, I like to keep my special conditions separate from the core logic of my functions. So one of the things I would do is I would move this part out into a private method that is the main body of this logic. And the special exceptional condition would just be separate out here before you enter the main body. Um, the other thing I would do is I don't love the way that this reads. It's, this is the easiest way to write it, I think. Um, but after having written it, what I would probably do is go ahead and invert the um, conditional. And now it says um, if 
s is not empty return s otherwise return the string value of i and the reason i like it this way better is because i like um, checking what s is and then using s side by side like this as opposed to having uh, the check on one side of the condition and the actual like returning of that value all the way on the right so i like this better myself um, and that's it our test still pass um, and we've removed all of the duplication uh, and this is a good looking solution to the FizzBuzz kata as we've defined it here. Um, I would be thrilled to interview someone and see them perform this kata like this. And that's it. That's FizzBuzz. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a little bit of fun. And I hope you practice. FizzBuzz really isn't all that hard. Don't let it catch you off guard in a job interview. It's a great opportunity to shine but only for those who practice. Again, I'm Mike, this is the Code Dojo, and I'll see you again.